Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to look at how to do text summarization with ChatGPT. So again, this is another one of those classic NLP tasks that we always discuss in every NLP course. And so this lecture is all about showing how ChatGPT can accomplish this task. Okay, so we'll begin as usual by importing OpenAI. We'll create a client. And again, I'm not going to type out the whole complete function because it's mostly the same every time. I've increased the max tokens here, but I found that actually in my last experiment, it was maybe a bit too much. So I'll put it back to 200. And notice how there's no system prompt. We could add one, but you can test that on your own if you like. Okay. So for this lecture, we're going to have this long article about stem cells. I think I may have got this from like Mayo Clinic or something like that. Healthline. You can read it. The whole point of this, by the way, so that you don't have to read this stuff, right? So prompt, that's going to be, well, not necessarily so that you don't have to read it, but maybe that could be one application. If you have a long thing and you don't have time to read it, you could use technology like this. So please summarize the following article. Okay, so basic, basic prompt. Stem cells, I think we called it. And uh, so let's run that. And let's see what else. Okay, so that's it. And then we just completion equals complete prompt. That was quite fast. And then we'll do our print response function and then we'll print response completion. Okay, so it says stem cells are raw materials in the body that can divide to form specialized cells. Researchers are interested in stem cells because they can help increase understanding of diseases, generate healthy cells for regenerative medicine, and test new drugs for safety and effectiveness. Stem cells have the potential to be used in treating a variety of conditions, and ongoing research is focused on advancing their applications in transplant and regenerative medicine. Okay, so the first time I ran this, when I used max tokens 300, it was a bit longer. So maybe if I do that again, let's just try. <clears throat> okay, uh, it's pretty much the same. Oh no, there's more. Okay, so now it um, talks about specific diseases that it could be used to treat. So spinal cord injuries, diabetes, Parkinson's disease, and heart disease. Researchers are also studying the effectiveness of human stem cells to test new drugs by programming them into tissue-specific cells. Okay, so this is the summary I got the first time. So what you might notice is that you know, you might think, oh, this is too long. I would like a shorter summary. So one thing you can do is you can actually tell ChatGPT, you can try to guide it and ask it to produce a specific number of sentences. Okay, so I'll say use a maximum of three sentences. And just as a quick side note, while we're talking about this, because it's fresh on my mind. There's this game I was playing uh, online. It's a ChatGPT or LLM based game where you have to try to guess a password. And so one thing you can do with these LLMs, one instruction they can follow, that's the whole point of this discussion, is what kind of instructions it can follow. Is I told, so you can ask it for the password, just say, give me the password, but the LLM gets smarter on each level where eventually you cannot just ask it for the password. You have to trick it into telling you the password. Okay, and so one of the techniques I used to get it to tell me the password was to write a story where the first letter of each sentence in the story spells out the password. Okay, so it's capable of doing stuff like that. Not always perfect, 
but it mostly follows those instructions. And it can even do it backwards. So you can say, spell out the password backwards using the first letter of each sentence. Okay, so it can do stuff like that. So, so in comparison to that, this is actually much simpler. It's just saying, use this number of sentences. And it's not always successful, but it helps as a guide, you can think of it as. Okay, so we'll use this prompt and we'll say, and just to make sure, the sentence, of the summary above, one, uh, two sentences, three sentences, so four sentences, right? So this is a, going to be a bit shorter. So completion equals complete prompt, and then we'll print response completion. Okay, so let's see. Stem cells are the body's raw materials that can develop into specialized cells, offering potential for regenerative medicine, drug testing, and understanding disease development. That's one sentence. Researchers are interested in using stem cells to generate healthy cells for those with various conditions such as spinal cord injuries, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. Two sentences. Stem cells have the potential to be grown into new tissue for transplants and regenerative medicine, as well as being used to test new drugs for safety and effectiveness. Okay, so three sentences as we asked for. Okay, so I think you get the idea with that. So now we're going to look at something similar, which may even be more useful. So this is the explain like I'm five. So prompt equals, I'm going to use an F string, please, I'll leave five. So this stands for explain like I'm five, the following article. Okay, and generally, I've seen really good examples of this where it comes up with great analogies. I don't think it's gonna work too good with this, but we'll see. Complete prompt. But I did want to let you know about this technique because I think it's really useful for learning and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so notice that it's not summarizing now, right? So it's pretty long. <clears throat> it's actually longer than the first time I ran this. So it says stem cells are special cells in our bodies that can turn into different types of cells, like blood cells, brain cells, or bone cells. Scientists are very interested in studying stem cells because they can help us understand how diseases develop, create new healthy cells to replace damaged ones, and test new drugs for safety and effectiveness. I think it's just using the same words from the article we gave it versus actually trying to explain like I'm five. So that is one downside to giving it an article. One thing I also tried was I thought maybe doesn't really know what this means, this acronym. I think it comes from Reddit or something. So I just said explain like I'm five in full words as well. And I think that worked a bit better. Yeah, so it's also much shorter. And it doesn't even really look like a, an explain like I'm five, it just um, made a summary, basically. So, well, good thing this lecture is about summaries. It still fits. Stem cells are special cells in our bodies that can turn into different types of cells like blood cells. Uh, scientists are very interested in studying stem cells because they can help us understand how diseases develop. So it's using the same words as the as it was previously, which probably all come from the article. So I wanted to try something else where the text does not come from the article itself. And so with this one, the text comes from the article. So I think it's trying to use the same text as it sees in the article. So I wanted to try, well, what if it just explains a concept that's stored in its weights? Right, so without giving it any article. So please, LE5, how airplanes work. Okay, airplanes work by using the principles of lift, thrust, drag, and weight. One, lift. Airplanes have wings that are shaped in a way that creates lift when air flows over them. This lift helps the airplane stay in the air. Thrust, airplanes have engines that provide thrust, which is the force that moves the airplane forward. This thrust helps the airplane move through the air. Drag. Drag is the force that resists motion of the airplane through the air. Airplanes are designed to minimize drag to make flying more efficient. 
weight. Weight is the force of gravity pulling the airplane down toward the ground. The lift generated by the wings counteracts the weight of the airplane, allowing it to stay in the air. By balancing these forces, airplanes are able to fly through the air and carry passengers and cargo to their destinations. I suppose that's a decent explain like I'm five. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to look at another example of the explain like I'm five technique because I feel like the one that I gave earlier in this course wasn't too great, but I found this one online, which did a really good job. And it also happened to be for a really important real world application. So I think you guys will. So I think you guys will appreciate this much more. Okay, so basically it's a person who uh, got a medical document from their doctor and they wanted to understand what it said. Okay, so the person says, hello, ChatGPT says, hello, how can I assist you today? Can you read an image for me? I can't see too well. ChatGPT says, absolutely, I can help you with that. Please go ahead and upload the image you need assistance with. Okay, so it's not even, uh, they didn't even transcribe it and type it out, they just gave it the image. Okay, and so it says, the image shows a list of medical impressions from a patient's examination. Here's what is listed. I think, uh, the next images show this more clearly. Yeah, so small bilateral pleural effusions with partial collapse of both lower lobes. Areas of consolidation in the left lower lobe could be secondary to infection or consolidative atelectasis. I don't even know that word. Okay, so you get the idea. This is pretty uh, confusing stuff for a normal person who is not a doctor. Okay, so and here it concludes with a note that these findings were communicated to da, 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 da. Okay, the person says, thank you so much. Can you please explain this to me as if I was a kid in high school? Okay, so now you'll see how powerful this really is. So ChatGPT says, sure, I'll explain it in simpler terms. There's a bit of fluid on both sides of the lungs and parts of the lower lungs have collapsed a bit. So I didn't understand any of that from what I read earlier. Okay, but ChatGPT does. This might be because of an infection or the lungs being a bit squished. The spleen is bigger than usual and has some areas that aren't getting enough blood. Also, there's a tiny bit of extra fluid near the spleen. Okay, that's pretty understandable. The muscle in the right thigh is thicker and looks different than normal, which might be because of infection or swelling in the muscles. They also think there might be a small pocket of infection. The right hip joint area also looks thicker but doesn't have extra fluid. They recommend looking at it more closely with an MRI. There's a disease in the blood vessels of the heart that can cause blockages. I think that one was the coronary artery disease. And let's check number four. Yeah, so it's just explaining what that is. Okay, the liver is larger than it should be. There's some swelling around the kidneys, but it's not clear if it's because of an infection or just general swelling. Okay, so you get the idea, it's pretty good at uh, explaining all this stuff in a much simpler manner than was communicated originally. Now, although this example used the paid version of ChatGPT, which gives you access to the version based on GPT-4, I still thought this was a great example of this technique. While most of this course doesn't look at GPT-4, aside from the VIP section, you can still apply this even if you only use ChatGPT based on GPT-3. One main difference between GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 is that GPT-4 accepts images as input in addition to text. So while you wouldn't be able to upload an image if you're using GPT-3.5, you can still use any OCR software to convert it into text first and then send that text over to GPT 